10 Warning Signs of Brainwashing Groups Love Bombing Things such as free hugs, giving people a lot of appreciation, getting very close to people, being very affectionate with individuals, over the top because of the group, a healing session where people hug before to bring them together to raise the vibration, in actuality is a way of ensuring that the chemical reactions in the brain that are going on make a person feel far better than they did. They put it down to the truth of the healing, but in actuality it's down to the chemical reactions in the brain that are brought about by hugging a person of the opposite sex, or if you prefer, a person of the same sex. This kind of emotional support is an excellent way of ensuring people's loyalty because they feel so much better in the group. Gee, I wonder why. And yet, the reason why is quite simple. Special educational groups, training programs, workshops. They have special knowledge, special information, and you need to go through a special program to understand how to correct your resonance, how to correct your quantum alignment, how to balance out your chakras. Most of it is obvious stuff, and it's put together in such a way that it seems to be something more than it actually is. The key facet of a thought reform or brainwashing group is an educational program for that very purpose, for brainwashing. You're basically trying to ensure that the person accepts your ideas as being more valid by having a convoluted method of getting to the end of the program where they accept it as being true because they've been partaking in the practices and philosophical ideas to such an extent that acceptance is the most logical conclusion. Biased psychoanalysis. Now many organisations have the idea of analysing individuals. In an official sense it might be something similar to Scientology and auditing. We go for an auditing process, perhaps in some cases with an e-meter, and they judge your character based on the questions and your reaction through the actual meter itself. However, in general, bad psychoanalysis is to find negative traits in those outside the group and the group itself has the ability for you to overcome negative traits. So in other words, they will find excuses to dismiss gurus of different groups. In this way you can dismiss someone who is a critic because they must have a lot of baggage to be so negative. And they'll employ psychological language to basically dismiss someone, to say that they're not operating in the right way, as well as throwing in a lot of word salad. This psychoanalysis is nothing compared to genuine clinical psychoanalysis. Instead, it's a question of selecting out points that may or may not be true to dismiss someone who doesn't have the same belief system as you. Claims of enlightenment and the unenlightened outsider. Through our practices, through our ideas, you will become far more enlightened. Those outside the group, they may have some good points, but you must understand that they're not as close to the truth as we are. Our organisation, our group, our spiritual journey is about opening you to the true nature of the universe. But those people who are against that must be unenlightened. Otherwise, why would they be criticising something which helps so many people? It makes them feel great, makes them feel good about themselves. It helps the world by raising the vibration and therefore is changing the world. Therefore, a person who's questioning that is not only unenlightened, they're also potentially quite dangerous. So in this way, many organisations are able to alienate those who don't accept the doctrine while elevating themselves with a kind of egocentric enlightenment. A concept of ultimate truth. Many people have the idea of truth, something to believe in, something to accept, but the concept of ultimate truth being so important that we have the answers, that is fundamental to many brainwashing groups. They have the idea there, this carrot on a stick, and this is what you need to believe in to find enlightenment, to move beyond the unenlightened world around us, and to change the world for the better. Focus on the practices, meditation, prayer, healing, energy work, channeling, and other concepts. Some kind of practice, something you have to do over and over to ensure that your abilities, your connection to the 
higher realms become stronger. It's a form of indoctrination that is key to actually making sure that you not only have the ideas when you're with the group, but you also keep the ideas with you when you're beyond the group. So devotional prayer is a good example. Prayer continuously or to a great degree, because this helps to consolidate your belief in what you're meant to be praying towards. Science C claims it's biased, selected, or just completely made up. It's where they have pseudoscience, and it's basically about convincing people who are slightly more intelligent. So many people will accept something as being actually true without any science. Other people who are more intelligent will be blinded by certain terms. And some other people will need some kind of test, something to convince them. And so as a result, they need some kind of sciencey reasoning to say, yes, this must be true. It's simply important to say that they have the tests, they have the evidence. Unchanging and unthinking conformity in the group. The group, in its groupthink, needs conformity. With standard religions, there are some of that, but certainly when it comes down to a brainwashing group, there are even greater limitations, and these limitations are to keep you on track, to keep you part of the group, not merely part of a belief system. A pyramid system leading towards the capstone, which is the leadership. Brainwashing groups, once they reach a certain size, it can become quite evident that there is a pyramid system with a leader or a group of leaders who rule. And below them, you have lower level leaders. And with larger organizations, you have many designations with the average person who gives a great amount of money starting at the bottom and by paying their money, putting in their effort and accepting it more, they climb closer to the top. But they don't reach the top because the top itself is dominated by an in-group which is unshakable. You can go from being a prol to the outer party, but you cannot become the inner party. Demands on your everyday life, rather than simply being a question of, oh, you go to church on Sunday, or you go to the spiritualist church on Tuesday, or you go to your yoga class on Thursday. Instead, it's a question of, well, we need to have you do this. Oh, we need this, we need that. They come to your home, and because you're indoctrinated and you're convinced that these people are friends, you accept it. With some organisations, they move a person into your house, and as they continue to manipulate you and make the belief part of your everyday, and keep friends who don't understand and accept the belief system away from you, they end up creating a stronger control over you. But in many ways, the most simple and unpleasant acts is where they come between you and your family or you and your friends and they make out that these people they aren't really your friends oh they may act like your friends but they don't really care about you and so they push away those people who might be able to help you to realize that the group is not in fact good for you by using this kind of manipulation in your everyday life